G'day everyone, welcome back to the best podcast ever with the classic Scotsman, Murray Calcutt. He is an absolute legend and he he's one of the he's an, he's like a as a professional bodybuilder, but he's also just finished his DNA consulting course thingy and he is coaching people, he's a spiritual warrior, and he's absolutely just killing it in the game. And he's got a really great message to share and to spread. So if you guys listen to this entire podcast and you get any value from it, and I recommend you do listen to the whole thing, and I know you'll get heaps of value from it, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. So guys, I have a little bit of coaching available at the moment. I've got some part-time, full-time, and some commitment coaching, which is awesome. So you just send me a message if you're really keen to like, you know, if you're at that stage of your life where you really just want to optimize yourself, when you want to invest in yourself, when you want to upgrade your health and fitness, if you want to understand how basically the meaning of life and like mystic and mysticism and the, the transformation of your own psyche works, send me a message. <laughs> Because we've been doing some great work in that space. It's actually really quite fantastic. I also have a recipe ebook available if you click down the links uh, below. And that basically, what I did to make that was I researched every single ingredient, like the best ingredients, the healthiest ingredients for you. And I put them into simply simple, easy recipes for meal prep, bone broths, for normal recipes, for everyday recipes, breakfast, midday, lunch, dinner dessert, all of those good stuff. There's some awesome, healthy, super healthy recipes in there. Also have a bone broth discount for 12% off for Best of the Bone Herbal Doctors, which is the best bone broth link below ever. It's like an Australian local organic grass fed. Oh, it's just the best stuff. If you're going to get bone broth, make sure you get the goo. And this is the best, the cream of the crop of the goo, the the goo, and you get 12% off, which is really good. I also have a training program out. And if you're just at that point where, you know, if you've ever had programs from a coach beforehand or or someone and there's just nothing's really sort of worked and you've just got a program that's like just a piece of paper and you're like oh okay i gotta follow this then like this program is essentially the best one for you i literally i, I got sick of sick of that stuff and i was just like you know I'm, I'm sick of just getting like i didn't really trust anyone i couldn't even buy a program from someone because i'm like i can't even trust you because i know i was going to get like a, a damn cutout so in terms of everything that I've learned, I was like, well, what can I do if I just put all of this stuff that I learned in a course so that someone could literally go from point A of, okay, I need to get back into the gym or I want to actually build a decent body and have the tools and resources and the mental skills to do it. And then to point B, which is like, has all the skills, super confident in the gym, and it's just consistently showing up and killing it every day. So I put all of that in the course and you can click some of the links below to find where that is and yeah see how you go with that because that is just fantastic so without any further ado guys i'll give you a uninterrupted podcast with the classic scotsman we get into all the real good stuff he's an absolute legend as i mentioned check him out all his links are uh, linked below and of course if you like this podcast please like share and subscribe and this podcast is brought to you by eternum labs eternumlabs.com.au which basically help people perform at their peak with the best longevity and energy supplements ever we've got a new range of supplements out at the moment and our nac and quercetin is doing really well so if you guys are interested in what they do to your body head to eternumlabs.com.au use the discount code corey c-o-r-e-y to get 10 percent off how good is that so enjoy this podcast guys this was like quite a fantastic one i hope you like it as much as i did and we'll see you in the next one g'day murray mate thanks for coming on to the show thank you for having me mate thank you yeah, good we were just talking about uh, dna because obviously you're a dna consultant now doing all the different crazy things and, and figuring stuff out you were just saying yeah. Um, you're mentioning how the more that you look into DNA consulting and into people's genes, you're like, oh man, these calories in and calories out thing is fucked. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's more learn about how the individuality between people and how people are so different. Um, and obviously the, the, the push for weight loss is still a massive thing for people. Um, they're still focused on the external, which is fine. The internal part can come. But when you're so focused on the two variables of calories in your mouth and calories out regarding moving or gymming, there's so it really restricts you when you look at other factors and how they can, how there's so many other ways to ex, incre, increase your external calorie output. Mm. Um, and when I test people's genes, I can see why the way they are. I can see why their their thyroid is not working properly. So that will affect their the calorie output. I can see why 
the potential insulin is not good. It will affect the output, their hormones, the, the fact that they can't metabolize a certain nutrient, a certain estrogen or whatever, hormones. Um, and it's amazing where it's, you can go to university for 50 years and to study nutrition, for example, and you cannot tell me what my body needs. You just can't. You can become a good educated guess, but you just can't. It's, it's, for me, it's an impossible feat to tell exactly what you need to eat and what I need to eat. Um, so that's the thing I've definitely noticed when I've been diving into the, the, looking at analyzing people's genes um, and people choosing a diet based on their beliefs rather than mm -hmm. based on their, their body, based on them. For example, I've got a guy who, I've got a client who's a, he's vegetarian, or he's a vegan, and he, every so often he has a bit of fish. Um, but his genes, the last thing they want to be is a vegetarian. Like, he's got three gene markers that can't metabolize and can't transport B12. Um, he has issues with absorbing iron. So, like, creating a, a diet with literally none of that, or very little of that, is going to cause massive issues in the line. Yeah, for sure. Is there any sort of like commonalities that you've kind of figured out whilst working with people where you've been like, hmm, that's really interesting. This is kind of showing up just commonly for like, obviously people listening are like, oh, like what's going to be going on with me? It was like a common one. Where you think, yeah. oh, this is quite common. Common ones are estrogen metabolizing. Okay. So nearly everyone I've tested, they have a reduced ability to metabolize a certain estrogen type um, and for for females that is obviously an issue where they are consuming estrogen through an environment they're, they're they're producing estrogen through their body but they're not metabolizing it and excreting it through the urine and um, because of the gene markers potentially because of the terrible estrogen that we are consuming through our life through the water through the air through the kind of things we're exposed to yeah, what are some more um, things as well just before we get into that i'd like to just hmm. just quickly just for everyone who's listening just because i know there's like there's quite a lot of things that like estrogen does in hmm. like come out of from your knowledge what are some of the things that um you've noticed where some of the main parts of estrogen come from so the, the, the issue with estrogen for males and females is the females get consuming too much estrogen that are causing breast cancer and males are consuming too much estrogen, which is lowering our masculinity as such. I'm lowering our testosterone. Yeah. And, and food is a big part. Um, I think a lot of the um, like processed foods with the, it's got a lot of soy based in it. It's got lots of processed oils and refined oils and stuff like that which is an issue which is very difficult to find anything now in a packet that doesn't have sunflower oil uh, or canola oil or anything like that in it um but it's it's a contributing factor to everything in your whole life that's why there's not one thing to focus on um like the, the air that we breathe is not ideal the water that we drink from the tap is is far from ideal um and it's just trying to counteract those estrogenic environments um, and try to put more kind of processes in, 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 your, in your life to stop that happening. And, and obviously metabolizing it as well, as I mentioned before. Mm, for sure. So I'm, I'm curious to how you got into this, man, because you <laughs> like competed in IFBB and you just got one of the biggest physiques that like, I think Australia has to offer for sure. <laughs> and you've done extreme, extremely well in the comp. So would you mind just letting us know what, what comps did you compete in? And then also like how you started to get into this? So I started, I started years back when I first came over here. I started, I was playing rugby in a decent level back in Scotland. And, um, but when I come over here, my work didn't really allow me to play rugby. So I thought, well, I'll just transition over to, to focus. I was gymming for a re for no reason and such. I was before I was gymming for, for rugby. And I was like, now it's just gymming for women, I suppose, which is not an ideal situation so i thought right let's transfer that that kind of passion on to to bodybuilding or gym so i pushed and i did start doing muscle model a and b um and i won queensland i went to the one mr universe in manila um then i went transferred over to muscle mania 
I did bodybuilding there. Um, I got a, a new coach just there. I got Brad Clark. So he kind of guided me through that early stage as well. I had no idea what I was doing. Like I was, I was doing like front double bicep, with my arms pointed like forward and stuff. <laughs> um, it was quite funny. Like he he came to me. He's like, "You need my help." I'm like, "Yes, I do." I, I know. I had no idea. And, but it's that, like, I was still quite new, and I even I knew that I needed help. And it's dropping that kind of ego there, which was looking back at that, it was the, probably the best thing I ever done was allow someone into me to help. Because I thought before that, I thought I knew everything. Um, and then from there, we just went to Queensland. I went to the Worlds and came second in the world at Muscle Mania mm-hmm. under 90s. Um, and then I went to w, I did WBFF with my wife. Mm-hmm. So me and Beck went to Worlds and I came fifth in the Worlds. I was still natural there. Um, and I'd done IFBB. I did, um, well, I did GPC powerlifting for once and I won that overall Queensland. And I came third at New Zealand and South Africa. Nice. At GPC, and I was still natty there as well, which is cool. And then I did I did Arnold's last that was my last natural comp, Arnold's, when I came one Melbourne overall and I came fourth at Arnold's at Classic. So that was that was where I I seen the potential that it could be. Um yep. before I was very much against um, enhancements because I thought, well, what's it for like I don't need to be that big or, or whatever. And of course, no one needs to be that big, but I just seen the potential I could be. And, and I think, well, if I'm beating people natural here on and I have the shape I have now, then what can, can the potential be? So it was until I focused on that and I thought like I could be the best at this, I didn't then commit to going on. Yep. Um, and yeah, I learned some, I did some terrible things. I learned from people that I shouldn't have learned from. And, but, <laughs> And it's fine because I, I, I don't judge people from uh, young boys are doing certain things and they're, they're doing terrible things with their body and I think I don't judge them. I just worry about them because I did the same thing or I did similar things. So it's like trying to connect people that way and says, I mean, I know what you're doing. Like you're listening to someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, and that's why I started my, my business. A part of my business, I was doing PCT, helping people come off, mm. um, come off gear. But um, but from from there, I just kept me going. Just I would say an unconscious bodybuilder, just doing the usual stuff, um, focusing on my external and doing these things, listening to certain people, um, focusing on just my calories, um, not really what I was eating. And then through my a lot of the contributing factors caused my awakening or whatever you want to call it um, from my my unconscious living I was doing so. Like one thing was a big one is I've been told I was going to be a dad, which is a mm-hmm. massive thing. So you can when you've been told you're bad dad, you you like all right. Well, I've got other someone else to care for now. I've got another human being to to look out for, which is a massive thing. My mother-in-law, she was she was her terminal cancer in the head, so that was and going through that whole treatment and there, seeing the Western medicine and seeing how they their goal is not to save anyone or not to heal anyone, which was a big, a big eye opener for me, the, which was the biggest thing for me actually to, to let that go, that Western world, and then explore other routes of health. And that was the big thing. And then a Joe Dispenzia course, and then and a Brit, and Wim Hof course, and my brain has been, <laughs> that was it. And now you're That hooked. was it. <laughs> that was it. That was done. So it was good death of old Murray and, the birth of whatever this is so and then from there i just um i did a lot of i got a lot of education myself and i helped luckily i had some really good friends who were already into this um this journey and studied a lot of things and i was going to go to to university going to go to college and anything but when i spoke to people who have already been there i told them what i want to do they're like it's not really you're not going to learn anything that you what you're trying to do of course, I will, but they said for the time, the money, the effort you can put into it, you were better paying people who are already doing what you're doing, who are self-taught for over 10, 20, 30 years, to then educate you from a non-formal point of view, mm. um, which is which is awesome. You learn more, but unfortunately, the, the world we're in, some people don't like that when there's like, oh, what qualifications you have, and you're like, not a great deal. Um, and they and they don't like that, but when people are awakened into the into the fact that 
the massive divide in the Western and Eastern world. And, and if you're if you are like waiting for someone to tell you your Western form, formal education, then they're probably not what I'm be edu- teaching anyway. So it worked out quite well. So the people who come to me, they, they, they come to me because they know my integrity. They know that I've come from a place of, of actually generally wanting to heal people and help people. And, um, and I've done a lot of their mistakes as well. So I can, I can definitely um, speak to people in a, in a manner of understanding. And, and another thing I use for a benefit of not having like a doctorate degree and things is they have, they have knowledge in their head from 20 years ago when they went to university. That knowledge was already 20 to 30 years out of date. So they are looking at your blood work, they're looking at your genes, they're looking at your life and recalling information from their subconscious that they remembered from 50 years ago, potentially, or outdated information. So that's where I can, sometimes I'm looking at people's DNA and I've got a DNA marker comes up that's, that's not active or activated and potentially signal to make a disease, then I sit there for the next two hours looking at peer-reviewed studies on this particular gene and how can we <laughs> silence that through supplementations and environments. So like, I don't know everything right now. I can't just go blah, 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 but I've got the ability of re- learning my new mind in the present moment where mm-hmm. I feel that is a big advantage for helping people because they are sick in the present moment. Yeah, and I think it's such a critical tool as well for people to understand. Like there's, there's billions of genes, right? There's so many genes. And no matter what gene person like you go to, depending on what genes that you have, a bit like nine times out of 10, they're going to have to go through and look at all the different peer reviewed studies anyway, and go figure that what is happening with your genes to actually figure it out because there's no automated system yet that, that figures every, everything out. It's, it's a, it's a personal absolute, you basically spend a lot of time going into, to figure what's going out into someone's actual genes. And like, you're learning a lot. And it's interesting, obviously you find someone with the same genes, but I'm, I'm assuming so many people have, there's just so many genes out there that it's it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, so. it's, uh, epigenetic stuff as well. So people's genes change through their life or their genes are different from their parents or their grandparents from a certain way. And it's because they've, the life they've lived has actually epigenetically changed their genes. When, when I say epigenetically, it means change from the external. So from the, the signal to that gene changes the gene's output or output can silence or or can enhance or activate different types of genes some people say turn on and turn off which may or may not be true but it's a, it's a new it's a new earth science um but it's definitely it's so important for empowerment i, I did a seminar recently at the, the fitness expo in brisbane the health and wellness expo it's really good because everyone's coming there with a different mindset rather than just watching girls jump around with their little shorts on um which is which is cool but it's not going to help it's not going to learn anything it's not going to help your health um so it's it was good like it's so part like a little bit snippet of the of the seminar is there's only eight diseases and syndromes in the whole world that come from a single gene so which means if you have that gene you're more likely to get disease so that's like taste sac disease sickle cell anemia hunting disease like they're quite rare but every single other disease or issue or syndrome is caused from multiple genes and caused by your environment and your your decisions that you make, the signaling those genes. For, for example, cancers, 12 to 14 genes have to be signaled to produce cancer cells. So it's not, so the, the beauty about that is it's not your fault that you get disease, but it means that you can control the outcome. And if you control the signaling to the disease, then you can control the genes. You control the signal to the gene, then you control the, the gene output of that and potentially a limiting disease in the future. Yeah, which, which is, is cool. Yeah, which is like absolutely awesome. And like a lot of respect to you, man, because I see you as like obviously you're 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 a bodybuilder. You've 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 competed all in the comps and I really respect that you went natural as long as you can before you actually jumped on to to testosterone but even still like um with you and and using testosterone you're still like just from like my own experience for people that i've known that have used testosterone that haven't been in in the in the bodybuilding industry is 
their lifestyle is also quite unhealthy and they're using testosterone for i wouldn't say the best reasons more insecurity to make them feel selves feel better to feel more confident to to feel more tough to feel more manly to feel more masculine or mm. something like that and then all of their lifestyle is still like suffering but you and your lifestyle and all the time and effort and energy that you put into it to being healthy and holistic I think is like so important, man. And I think people can like really look up to like all the stuff that you do. I mean, even from like how you go for hunting, which I mm. want to come, please invite me <laughs> to Queensland now. I'll come up soon and do some hunting for sure. That's on my to- like bucket list this year. Yeah, and man. then, and then, and then, yeah, also all the way you live and like where you live in your house and the, just like the air and everything you do, everything so na- like so, so naturally. I just, I really respect that, man. Definitely, it's been a big, it's been a big difference, and um, the one, the big difference for me is 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 noticing how little things adding up makes a massive difference. So, you can you can dismiss so much little things at, if that's the only thing that you're not doing. And, oh, that's fine. But if you're not doing 10, 20, 30 little things, then you're losing out in so much potential growth or potential or in, can improvement in yourself. I got I follow some bodybuilders online. And they're they're so good with their with their their steps. So good with their calories counting um, and their training. They're really good, but they don't do anything else. Like they're like they're focused on destroying their muscles so much, isn't that? Which is the gym, but they don't focus on how to recover and how to re- grow and repair. Um, which is it's a shame because they do spend so much time on. Because I said to the people, you go to the gym for two hours a day, two and a half hours, some people, um, away from your family, away from your loved ones. And then you go home and you're, the rest of your life is terrible. Um, and you're wasting so much time because that, that, that time in the gym there um, is obviously destroying muscles, is is kind of is breaking those fibers down so then you can grow. How easy way to explain. Um, but they're not doing anything to grow outside the gym. It's a big thing, and it's it's like you, a lot of things you do as well. So it's the meditations, it's the it's the even just the keeping your mind in a positive space where, and and you, the way that you think, the thoughts that you feel, um, because that actually helps you grow. So the the vibration of love and happiness, uh, actually, unlocks your genes. So there's some few studies where they've put a, a gene next to a heart, and got that person to feel anger. And, and frustration or or guilt and that gene constricts it, un, it actually constricts when it stops unraveling so whatever that gene is for it starts producing that could be uh, a, a gene for producing muscle cells um, and then you go into you ask that person to feel love and gratitude and that gene unravels and expresses what it's meant to do and um, wow. so that's a, a and there's a few studies that show the same thing when children are separated from orphan homes where they they're both they're all all got no parents but half of them go into the home and half go into um with parents foster care and then they follow them through their life and the kids the children with no love in their life have a massively smaller heart lungs kidneys just everything like they just don't grow because they're already in that state of fear a little bit and, and they don't have that love so they're they're vibrating a lower vibration, which is affecting their their growth state, which is a, which people have no idea about bodybuilding, which is um, which is but it's cool that if you can add that thing in, like it might not be a massive thing, but it can add that in along with the other things, along with your calorie count and along with the other things that can it can help. Yeah, oh man, that is just so so beautiful and absolutely wow to that study, how they they mutated the genes. And man, I don't know about you, but I think that the whole there's like a like a big stigma around bodybuilding. I think there's been a like a, a couple of people that have been really positive for the industry of bodybuilding, but there's there's obviously been throughout the years, I think of people you know, really using body bodybuilding as an outlet for insecurity to feel more masculine, to feel at home somewhere or, or something like that, or to get more confident has sort of ruined for like, I'd say the general population of people of like getting into the gym for the reasons of peak health, peak mental, physical and health condition. 
um, because it's one of those things that after some of the studies that I've read and researched and looked at people that um, I really respect, and it just just mentions for like just for example like older people, for people who are getting older and and using NA and like increasing NAD within the cells. There's just I highly recommend like go and do some resistance training, and your energy output will increase drastically and you will live so much longer in a better body if you lift weights but then people think like oh i don't want to lift weights that heavy or i don't want to lift the weights or, or, or do these or do these other things so i just like i'd love to hear your opinion on that yeah definitely like there's a as you said mentioned before there's a few there's a few people who go in there's a lot actually go to, into bodybuilding with the as the means of masking potential issues that they have Mm. Which is which is fine. I think that's good. I think that's other re- all the other option is drugs or alcohol. Yeah, it's a great op. I don't think it's absolute great option for sure. So it's so it's, there's yeah. no there's yeah. this is no. It's probably, it's probably the best option you could do. I would say if anything I else, think so. if you were going to use so. some, use an outlet for something, bodybuilding would be the best thing mm. to do. Is go get yourself some big muscles. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But what I say to people is, is when you're in that space, when you are feeling good, and you look yourself in the mirror and you go fuck it, that's the time to then remember the reason why you started the gym and see if those issues, those, those demons are still there. Because if, if you don't quiet the mind, if you don't stop going to the gym for a week or two and then look into those things, you don't know if they're gone or not or just covered up. And then you look into now what's happening with the world with the gyms getting closed. There's people that are killing themselves because they can't get to the gym. It's not the gyms so awesome is the fact that that gym is covering up the, the, their noises in their head, the issues that they have, the insecurities, the, the childhood traumas that they try to cover up. So it's the people like that. There, there's going to be more gym closures. So people who are listening, who are no friends and family, who are is struggling with that, and who are who are gym dependent, addicted to the gym, the feeling or the the masking factor of the gym. They, try to make sure that they get help when they're in the gym so you've got both so you're you're straddling still gymming but getting help for the issues that you're there um and these people are focused on their external so much because that is the big thing so they don't look into internal because they don't even want to see their issues so they're on the external so that's why they do things like they have artificial sugars so they can eat more or drink more food they they, they don't they just they don't really Okay, what they eat as long as they can hit the calorie balance and, and these people start to look really good and then they start to have lots of followers on instagram and and then they project their beliefs onto other people who want yeah. to look like them Again, so it's that expands. constant cycle yeah it's so a constant cycle and then you've got yeah. people like james smith pt who who i think is he's a he's a good person i think he helps more people than he hinders however people need to realize that he'll he'll take you from being terrible to average but average is still far far less than you should be striving for yeah um, and to then to transform from there from the average where he can take you you need to look at other aspects you can't fo- keep focusing on yeah. these just the calories in calories out balance yeah bodybuilding is such a perfect gateway to actually get into self and and inner develop because firstly obviously you, you're working on your body and then I think a part of that comes with the mind. However, with the common beliefs of chicken, broccoli, rice, which I think is starting to fade out now. But um, well, from what I can see, anyway, I'm not sure if it is. If most people are not on the chicken, broccoli, rice, some people diet. like it. Some people, some people like it. it. If you like it, yeah, it's, it's obviously fine. You can do it. It's other ways around it. But there's also, um, I think, just in terms of uh, just all the natural food resources and stuff, is like it's it's, it's a great great thing. But I, what I find fascinating is that like bodybuilding itself in terms of the whole resistance training, energy, getting better, turning on good genes and things like that is it sort of, it just fits into this whole health world so perfectly. And it's weird in its weird little way, like the whole bodybuilding and all the science for bodybuilding is like all starting to fit into all these other different sciences and they're all sort of working congruently together. And I think it's uh, people like you who are sort of bringing this, conscious bodybuilding awareness to being the best version of yourself and you know if you've already built yourself a body and 
you may have used it through let's say decent a decent nutrition maybe maybe not as what it could be because when you start obviously diving into nutrition and genetics right you're like this is just never ending (laughs) (laughs) of what i what i could do um yeah i think i think someone like you is a real good person that kind of shows you know like like you're a really good example of yeah bringing consciousness to bodybuilding because it's yeah as i was mentioning it's like a first step in order to take that 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 self-development to a whole different level um, which I think is just, it's so fantastic, man. And, and, and I hope it just keeps moving forward. Yeah. And I hope I do try to keep encouraging people to do the, to do the right thing. Um, but it's difficult. It is difficult because what I, a lot of first I preach, um, I tell, I'll tell people what they need to know, not what they want to know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that, and that's, that's not ideal for mass followers. Um, as I mentioned that like James Smith, he tells you what you need, you, what you want to know. Um, which is which is fine, and that's. But I, I just can't integrity wise tell you something that is not going to help you. Um, and I, one of the things I do struggle with is is seeing people online and and people telling other. I don't mind what they do themselves. I don't mind if they um, like like Lauren Simpson the other day shared a life hack of um, getting a, a an ice cream from McDonald's and putting your coffee for a, like a a frap like a cheap frappy or something. And I thought right. I don't mind you doing that, but she put it on her Instagram to encourage other people to do the same. And she's got like a million followers. That's, that's the stuff that kind of gets to me. I'm like, Oh, like, so they, now they, they, they can think that's okay to do it because she does it and she's obviously not them. Um, and, that, and that's the stuff that I struggle to just don't go on and go and stop doing that fucking shit. But, um, <laughs> With great yeah, but I can't, I can't, great I can't just keep giving my energy to everyone else. And I definitely have, learned that and i've definitely took that on board and that's why i start doing podcasts and doing um my my alternate instagram page where people can follow and or they can't and that's the thing and that's okay and i don't if they don't want to hear what i'm hearing that's that's all right and maybe one day they might go oh maybe that crazy scotsman was right maybe i should <laughs> i should care about more factors in life rather than just the how many calories i'm eating yeah yeah which is yeah, I think it's a really important message. Yes, it's like great power comes with great responsibility, right? But um, I'm really intrigued into like what do you, what do you what do you do in terms of like to keep yourself? Because you mentioned a couple of times like okay, it's all the little things that you add in, in a day, and it could be weekly, weekly, monthly, yearly, because everyone has all these different routines and different protocols and things that they try. But what are some of the things that you have sort of that you've implemented and that you've kept because obviously i always implement a whole bunch of different things and some stick and some don't and that's fine for the ones that don't and and it's good for the ones that do and then i try to do everything like like the past year like my one goal um like personal development wise is to go out hunting um because i want to have that experience of going out there killing an animal having a cry being like i'm so sorry and then cutting it up and getting all of its meat and then freezing all of it and then eating it for however long and and, and just yeah. having that sort of experience so i'll get like you know close to, uh, a close experience with death to see if i can actually deal with that to work with those demons within myself so that's like one sort of spiritual example but like mm. obviously you do a whole bunch of different things what are some of the like non-negotiables for you and um some things well, that you've learned and like it's not as I, w- I don't do as many things as i should um because of my my little boy and and like but the best, the bit, things that I do daily are things like the bone broths, things like um, I make homemade pate. I make my. Um, I love pate. Can I stop you there? Can we talk about pate for a of second? Of course, of course. I make some homemade pate. I've been making mine. Yeah. I've been making like like a veal liver and a, yeah. a, a an organic coconut cream, and then I just cook up a whole different bunch of just spices and then blend them together, mm. chuck it in the fridge, mate. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've got I've got one in the fridge now, which is three different animal li- livers. Yeah. So it's like lamb, chicken, and um, duck, I think. Um, but I, I have I had concentrated mushrooms into it and bone broth as well, and then which I, I like Worcester sauce in mine as well, which is cool. Oh, um, how do you how do you just do you just put it on the side of your food? Like how how do you eat yours? Well, so I've I've got we've got bread baker now, and I've been making organic bread. Um, so it's because I'm, I'm a I'm a stay at home dad now. So I come home and my wife comes home and it's got fresh bread making. So it, it definitely helps. 
Um, <laughs> and my, my son loves it as well. So like, like I don't like feeding my child bread from the shop. Um, so I make my own. So I know at least I know it's literally just organic flour, um, water, yeast, and all, uh, olive oil, and that's it. It's it's awesome. So yeah, so I have patio on that. So things that more like focus on the obviously the nutrient dense foods. Yeah, is is cool and making sure there's I'm not the, the, my bowl is not just full of macros. There's other yeah. there's other things in it. Um, but regarding other things, so um, I tip I still tip my mouth shut every night. Um, for so make sure because I struggle with my nose, my mouth and my nose. So um, I have Vicks and I have nose strips as well. I can do it night time. I've got a grounding mat in my bed, which um, I plug into the wall, which is one of my things to get my, pretty much every client to do is um, there's a company called earthing.oz and they do grounding mats where you plug into your wall. Um, mm-hmm. so there's three plugs, two of them are plastic that go to the power and the top one's the metal one that goes into your earthing port um, and you're lying on pretty much the grass all night. So, so that's a big that's the big one and there's lots of studies to show like a 70 percent total body inflammation for if you have disease diseases so um which is a massive thing for recovery and a lot of clients say to me like when they wake up they actually feel like they've slept which is a, a big part um doing making sure i'm conscious of my emf in my house as well so uh, we have organites and we have emf protection places we have turn off turn off the power at night time um, I make sure I get my sun every day. I'm quite brown at the moment, which is cool. Um, when I, I, I it's most rare for a people. Scotsman, right? It's brown. Yeah. It's rare for a Scotsman. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad, and it's good because I sit in the deck with the sun in the morning. It comes up like seven thirty, eight o'clock, and I feed my son out there, and um, I get my balls out in the sun and feed <laughs> yeah. and feed and, and feed feed the little boy. So it's yeah. little habits like that. I make sure I walk. I, I don't wear shoes ever now now yeah pretty much um ice baths i've neglected them recently but they'll be coming the weather's getting hotter now so they'll be coming back and that's not an excuse with the weather getting warmer <laughs> it's, more, it's, it's more the fact that um when i get up have to get in the morning with my son i put him outside and it's yeah i'm um, just teasing cold, i'm but, just teasing <laughs> but no, no. i also i also like the start, new studies with ice baths and obviously they're focused on for there and the focus on muscle growth um, and too many ice baths can limit that potential growth um, through the stuff that I see. So I'd add it back in soon with the fact of I do need to start silencing my mind more um, and focusing on doing forced breath work. So that's which, which I'm going to add back in again. So it's the, it's at the moment the world is full of things that you can worry about and, um, and sometimes it's hard to silence that and ice baths are the best one for me the best ways of doing that i agree i remember because i had an ice bath at my house and we got in every single week for over a year it was like a year and a couple of months and we'd find that when people would come around they get to the ice bath and when they would get in they go oh my gosh i needed this this week if people had like a really stressful week which i thought i thought was just absolutely fantastic and as well, I looked really deep into, I went real deep into the ice bath studies and all the ice bath studies were around people swimming for like in, t- in 10 degree cold water. And mm. we did a couple of studies around um, the, the two minutes in the ice bath. But what they didn't take into consideration in what I found out is that obviously the ice um, does increase testosterone later. And like, like you go to the gym whilst you're training, your testosterone goes down and then afterwards goes up. And they didn't do any, and obviously you get a better sleep with with the ice bath. They didn't take into consideration like, um, okay, so how's my muscle recovery going to be in terms of growing over like a week, two, three, four week period if I'm not getting into an ice bath directly after gym. I'm going on a rest yeah. day and yeah, I'm that's, getting that's better sleep. Yeah, sure. So that's what I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, hmm, with some of the studies. So I thought that was kind of... No, the one big thing as well, I, I, I totally agree. Like I... So I didn't. I still. I just don't do them after the gym or before. I do yeah. them separate them as well, which is, which is just like it's every every life that decision that you do. You have to look at how can you minimize or increase that potential thing, and it's like what you, what you do in your life, where is that kind of downfall down the later, and you try to implement things in. Um, and the good thing about ice baths is, 
and in Wim Hof teach as well. So it opens up your your vascular system, which so you can send nutrients and you can send blood to your extremities. So when you when you're if if you can send more information to your to your body, then you can send information for growth and repair. So I do think, as you said, long term, if you do ice baths for two months, then the next ten months of that year, you're you're producing so much more blood flow to the areas where it needs growth and repair. And that's why when you're older, they shut off, uh, and your your legs are grey and they start toes are falling off in that because they don't open up. Yeah, oh, isn't that just absolutely fascinating? Curious question. What would you say to people? Like if you had someone who started to, um, like had a little bit of career success, they started getting a little bit of money, they started you know, working, they're, they're getting a little bit older, you know, maybe perhaps mid 20s, early 30s, and they're like, cool, I really want to start investing in myself. Like obviously I'm going to go, I'm thinking about going to see someone to get my, my, my fitness sorted out. I want to get my health. I want to sort out my, my mind, do the inner work and start working on myself. What are some of the things for someone that you think, you know, sort of just like a journey to, what, what would you encourage them to start doing as like, a, as an initial thing? They're like, cool, I want to get into this and here's some of the things that I could do. What, what would you encourage them to do? I would encourage them, for me, I, when I talk to my clients and stuff and they're on, I would tell them to test their genes and test yeah. the blood work initially. Yeah. Two, two of these things, blood work and genes, you can tell so much about a person from there. And then you can implement things in that are based on you and it's not guessing. I don't, I said life shouldn't, your, your, your longevity shouldn't be a guess. Um, and if you don't control your environment, or, or my, 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 um, or a phrase for our business, my business is control your environment to create your life. Because if you don't control the environment, your environment will control you. And regarding testing your genes and then doing the right things going forward, you're, just, you're wasting so much time if you don't. Because, for example, I've I got two clients there. One doesn't metabolize vitamin D from skin or from food very well, so needs to supplement vitamin D or vitamin D in this country. And then the other client, can metabolize sun from skin and from food, but not from supplements. So this is one little example of you think you're doing the right thing by lying in the sun for heaps or taking heaps of supplements and whatever, but you still don't know exactly what it is for you. Mm. Um, so wow. people who are, and, and as I said before, it takes a lot of time. Go to the gym, prepping your food, all these things. It's time consuming. I don't want people to waste their time. So if you're you're taking a supplement because you know you need to take it rather than I think I should take it, that makes a big difference when it comes to justification of what you're doing. And people would say, well, why are you taking the pill? It says, ah, it's good for you. Um, but if you can say, oh, it's because of my genes and it affects my blood work, but I can I can test people's genes and then I can tell them where the, that they'll be falling down in their blood work. Hmm. Um, and it's... And then you can actually start when you when your blood works good and you're actually living towards your genes. The, the gene testing even goes towards where, like, what type of training you should be doing, um, like power and speed, and what kind of how much recovery you should be doing for your genes. Like, I, I need more recovery than other people for the amount I can the amount I do. So I've been training three days a week the last like six, last three, four months. How are you feeling? Um, can't complain. <laughs> right, I'm going to I'm going to step up again. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's that's the advice I would tell people because, what? and the same as when you're in the gym as well, you need to ask people who are no more than you, so you can learn rather than learning yourself over the two years. I say to people as well, if you if you keep coming to the gym and doing a technique that you feel that is good, what you're doing is that you're obviously programming yourself in your subconscious and for doing that technique. It's like a lap pull down, you do it six months, your brain knows exactly how you, you do that, your muscle knows how to pull it down. But if that's wrong, all you're doing is you're you're getting really good at being shit. <laughs> it's a good I mean, way to put and it. Then, and then it's so hard to un un change to change that. Yeah, to change your mind yeah, after it's already programmed 
is, is so much difficult than rather at the start when your mind is still fresh and doesn't even know that exercise yet. Yeah, so true. What, and out of curiosity, what, like what gene system do you get people to go through? Like where do you get people to test their genes and, and then where do you put yeah. it through to, to see it and analyze everything? So for, um, I'm a practitioner for Smart DNA and it's a good company because it's one of the only ones that don't store and harvest your DNA and send it to China, which is cool. So they, so they say they burn, as soon as the only copy they get is myself, I'm the only one that get the copy or and, and the client and it gets, all your records get burnt after that. Which is good. It's a cool thing. So you would you would send the the money to me. I would order it online. It would send you send your house. This is a saliva swab. Then that gets sent back. And then you post that back to the company, and then they send back back the, the results to me. And I would spend how many long time to design that. So it's for me. I've got um, so from your DNA and your blood work, we'll do supplementation recommendations food recommendations and it's some of the foods that recommendations that you should incorporate for the rest of your life based on your genes stuff that supplementations that you should be incorporating your rest of your life so um there's two clients there just recently are both both needing b12 forever um and c and d so it's it's a it's really it's really good and then you can also bring into your lifestyle factors into it as well where you need to live a certain way because you don't know exactly which like everyone will get a disease tip eventually let's say let's assume that and it's when you get that determines on your lifestyle and can you stop signaling that gene to make the disease but if you don't know what gene you have to stop signaling it's a lot more difficult you're gonna to have to do what me and you are doing and just try to cover as many bases as possible <laughs> which is which is which is awesome however it's difficult um you, you you might focus on your your brain and you get obsessed with your your neurons and neuroplasticity and then you forget about your prostate mm, kind of thing you mean just for just for example and, and it's, so you can narrow down and you can just supplementation on your prostate um like supplement or something for that um, and it just that's my advice for people um so you you the good thing about testing your genes and blood work that you get better right now, today, and then future as well. Yeah, which I think is like like really really important, and I think that's also important with 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 um, training as well. Like I think where bodybuilding does need a little little bit of probably more reverence around is just how long it takes to build a physique, man. It takes so long. And then when you think about gym and training and exercising and actually getting good at stimulating the muscles and making them grow and good at training your body and, and keeping consistent at the same time, it's just a never ending learning thing. Like the body is just so magnificent and bodybuilding is this like beautiful opportunity that you can have to, I believe, get really in touch with the body that you own, the only one that you have. Um, <laughs> In, in order to, in order to better it and i think that point that you mentioned beforehand is get someone who's good in the gym like really good and has been there and put in the work to teach yeah. you because they'll teach you properly because they've learned the body on just a, a level that you don't know yet and that's one thing that i like for some of the people that i respect that i follow um is they're always getting pts and stuff as well from people that are even better and people that are even better and they're constantly learning and they just never stop learning about their body and it's just it's just quite fantastic yeah, I just got a PT. Um, he's doing programming for the next. So, regarding for me, for my my fitness journey from from now on, I just can't see me competing again anytime soon. Um, world, state the state of the world we're in. I just can't see me going abroad to America um, because I have to go abroad. I can't compete in Australia. Yeah, there's nothing here for IFBB Pro classic there's no classic comps yep. so getting to america and getting back to australia safely without going to a concentration camp <laughs> i just don't see happening um i will not i will not be taking anything to get me over there um yep. regarding injection wise and for my son back in back in australia i just can't leave him here and not knowing that when i come back or so and again like and Competing is not even remotely at the top of the tier regarding my priorities anyway. So 
which is fine. But I do want to give it one just one last go regarding my physique capacity. So I'm having a bit of lull at the moment, a bit of rest, and then I'm going to go hard for a bit and see how big and lean I can get um, yeah. and do a photo shoot and then just probably just go back to natural um, for how long it takes. Yeah, well, that's one of forever. The, yeah, it's one of the beautiful things of bodybuilding, right, is you can, like, one of the main things that I find so fantastic is most of the real pro guys that I see compete, like the real, real good ones I follow, they're, they're like in their mid-40s, man, almost 50s, and they're like at peak then. So I'm like, that's why I do like the sport. It's quite beautiful, and, and it, it takes a long time to build a body, but you also, you keep it for a long time too, because of what I believe anyway, so. Yeah, so I hope for now that I've got this size, like, keeping as much as I can natural. Um, and I was still like, naturally, I was still strong and stuff. I just, I know when I, when I go back, cause I always, I do always come off and on regularly. Cause I do preach that coming off properly and, and doing the right thing. So I tried to do a, a preach and so I come off for eight weeks um, at least every time. And yeah, the biggest difference I noticed there is just recovery. Yeah. Honestly, like the strength is maybe 10%, 5% less nothing major um and it's just but just recovering from the next session you actually feel like you've trained i mean you feel like oh shit I, i've got sore muscles here um, <laughs> what which is you don't, this which, uh, which you rarely get honestly like when you're when you're on your body just heals a lot quicker and that's the biggest the biggest thing can taste so um but i do I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to coming back to go to natural and, and focus on my biohacking and focus on experimenting on myself regarding boosting my testosterone and seeing how I can how I can get it and adding things in and and, and then monitoring my test test levels and seeing what happens uh, yeah. and then so I can so I can help other people rather than just going oh this study shows this I can go I did this I'm, and I massively helped and it, yeah, I think it's it, interesting it'll be good fun. Yeah, man, I like talking to you, Murray, man. We have such similar interests and similar goals and passions, man. I, I really mm. enjoy talking to you. I um, I have the same goal. I'm, I'm on like a, on a, like a, I've got a photo shoot because my competition got cancelled. It was like my first pro show. I was like, yeah, they got cancelled. I was like, damn oh, it. WFF, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> so I got cancelled. Mm. So um, yeah, I was super pumped for that. So I'm just getting uh, super lean for a photo video shoot. So I'm like, well, I'm halfway there and I like to be committed and stay disciplined. Um, throughout the period of time because I find my brain works really well when I'm a bit leaner too but my next goal after that same one as you is I want to get us like try to measure as the highest testosterone that I can get naturally mm -hmm. um, and see and see what happens there so a new competition where we can get 10 of us we can see how high we can get yeah we can see how we can get it naturally try some different yeah. things uh, which would be really which would be really interesting so <laughs> that'd be but cool just to run for people to see there's, anyway. thing, there's some uh, natural like testosterone like quickly and hopefully it can help some people here but and there's in night supplement stores you've got your natural testosterone boosters yep and just like you know if they work they're not natural mm. if they work to a point where you can actually feel the difference and you can notice a big change in your physique because i know i know for actually a fact that there's i know about people who make them um, and i know that they've put d-ball and anavar inside them before Whoa. So that's a little side warning for people who take these these natural testosterone boosters from America or from wherever. Um, if they that's do work, man. if they that do work, so important to know. Bear My in mind goodness. that if you come off them, there might be a world of issues regarding your testosterone and your estrogen and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, goodness, imagine that mm. taking a taking a. A test booster supplement that's claimed no testosterone and the next minute you have to do a pct to come off my goodness <laughs> it's yes, out there man yeah. i don't even know what people don't like i've got a few clients that are have permanently destroyed their testosterone natural testosterone production because of too long on gear and not coming off properly yeah i like um, herbs so I man i stick to herbs i uh, i don't go with any of the nat all the natural test boosters will the test booster supplements that I've, I've researched on, they just always have too much stuff in them, and I, I I get a little bit put off. So I just stick, I just try to stick to the herbs, and I smash a lot of a lot of ginseng. But I'm, I'm like, ginseng time, baby. <laughs> it's just it's just looking at like, for example, the the the, the calories in, calories out thing. 
you got I've got clients that are the same body weight, pretty much the same output, but on like two thousand calories difference to maintain. Wow. So let's have a look at the guy who doesn't eat as much food. So I want to get him leaner. So we'll just we'll just take his food away or we'll just increase his calories, his cardio. He can't do any more cardio because he's he's busy at work. Um, so we take his calories down again and again and again and again. Um, and we don't look at his blood work. We just assume that his blood work is great. And then what happens is they don't get lean because the body is on lo too low calories. So when you're on too low calories, the reason that we are survived as humans right now is because we can adapt our bodies to survive on low calories. If we just kept burning calories the same rate as we go down, we would die when we go starvation mode. And so we, our body starts to, to close down and hold on to those calories. So way the way that you can increase your output, your burn calorie burning without moving as much is looking at where your blood work is not working properly, where your body is not firing. That's the issue. That's the big thing. So you can look at, you can test your bloods and you say, right, you're, you've got underactive thyroid, right? Boom. That's one place you can focus on. You can supplement that and you can, and you can increase that. You look at your insulin levels and there, there's your pancreas and your insulin is not working properly, right? You can do supplementation and you can do say, intermittent fasting to reset that or to keto to reset that. Um, so there's so much more and hormones. You can look at that persons who got low calories can have absolute zero testosterone. Um, so there's so much more to, and unfortunately these people who are like, might do, these could be like an eight week shred that they come to a PT in Gold Coast for. Um, and then they get them shredded for eight weeks and the calories are like 1700 calories and they take a picture, they dehydrate them and take a picture. This is true. People do that. They actually get you to do a dehydration for the eight week shred and take a picture so they can have a bigger contrast in before and after. And then they'll, then they'll let that client go back into the wild again with zero testosterone, zero the hormone levels and um, like your thyroid fact and you're on like 1700 calories. And that's why when you're on, when you focus on calories in, calories out, you'll always, you'll never be stay lean. And that's why James Smith VT is fat. And that's why he'll always be fat because he'll never focus on anything apart from the calories in and calories out. Yeah, man, you yeah, absolutely sent some points right there. Mm. So, Murray, I just want to absolutely thank you for your time and your wisdom on your show. And I do, I love who you embody and all the stuff that you do. Can't wait to smash some gym sessions together and go out and shoot something. We can shoot <laughs> something, yeah. I've got yeah. a new skinning knife you can try if you want. Oh, man, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to cry as I do it. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but but no, it's happened to me. I'm super keen to link up. Um, for people who want to reach you, man, where can they find you? So my personal Instagram is the classic Scotsman. So it's easy to remember. Um, I've got my lifting strap business, which is Demand. But you need to get a pair, and yes, um, my my new my, my coaching business is the Environmenters, which is it's all under the classic Scotsman. You'll find the link in there. Yeah, awesome. and the website's just getting built at the moment, so you can we can go on you can go on soon, and you can see all the 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 packages and programs and things like that. Well, I'll link it. Send me the link to the website, and I'll yep, link it down we'll do. in the descriptions below. So whenever people are ready and it comes up. Um, they can go and have a look there too. So everything will be linked on Murray's below if you want to contact him or have a chat. We'll see everything what he's about, man. So if you want to leave anyone with any um, wise words of wisdom, man, if you want to say anything, please do. Um, if not, they're all good. Um, let's think. Um, if you think you have an, something in your head, knowledge or information, think about where you got that from. Think about if it is new or old. Think about if it was yours or your schools or your parents. Because if you're living a life on old information, you're not living your own life. Boom. Boom. Mic, mic drop. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on to the show, man. And I can't wait to talk soon. Cheers, man. See you, Corey. Boom. Yes! Oh, oh, should, oh th these ones. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> of course you did. I oh, love that. Dude, awesome podcast.